Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a Penrose Triangle. Since a Penrose Triangle is an impossible object, we'll have to do some creative problem solving to make this work. Alright, let's get started. I'll begin by making a new composition, and I'll make it 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to make sure that the duration is 600 frames. And I'm also going to call it Penrose Triangle. In the new composition, I'll go up to Layer, New, Shape Layer, and I'll add a rectangle, and I'll add a fill. I'll rename the Shape Layer to be Side 1. And then I'll go into the Rectangle Path, and I'll change the size to 450. Then I'll make it 3D. I'll twirl up the layer, and then I'll duplicate it twice. Using the Pan Behind tool, I'm going to move my anchor point up to the top of this side three, and if I hold command, it'll snap up to this edge. For side two, I'm gonna do it to the right edge. Then I'll switch over to two views, and I'll make sure that my other view is the top view, which you can see right here. I'll highlight side two and I'll pull up its rotation, and I'll change the Y orientation to be 90 degrees. Then I'll pull up side three's rotation and I'll make its X rotation 90 degrees. I'll twirl those up now so I can see everything. And then I'll change my colors on the fill just so that they're all a little bit different. Now I'll go up to layer, new, null object. I'll make this null object 3D and I'll rename it to be control. I'll pull up its position with P and I'll change the Z value to be 225. 225 is half of 450, so I'll make sure that it's in the perfect spot to be centered for this cube. The cube we're making only has three sides because that's all that's going to be visible. Now I'll parent all three sides to the control. I'll pull up the control's rotation and on the Y orientation I'll change it to 55 degrees and the Z I'll change to 45 degrees. Then I'll switch back to one view. The cube is having a little bit of perspective warp, so to combat that, I'm going to make a new camera. So I'll go up to Layer, New, Camera, and I want to make sure it's got a really strong zoom. So right now it's got 1000 as its focal length, and that's left over from the last time I did this, so that's going to be pretty good. And you can see the difference there. Now I'm going to pull up my title safe grid so I can see the center point of my comp, and I just want to make sure that the corner where all of these are converging is right in the center. Then I'll deselect all my layers and I'll grab the pen tool. I'll zoom in here and I'm gonna go ahead and just draw my lines that are gonna make my edges. So it's gonna end up being two different strokes and I'm gonna make it 25 pixels wide. I'm also gonna rename this layer to be lines and I'll turn on this button here, which is to preserve underlying transparency. And what that does is it just mats it to all the layers below it. So that's looking pretty good. At this point, I'm going to select all my layers, and I'll go to Layer, Precompose. And I'll just call this Precomposition Cube, and then I'll hit OK. Now I'll pull up the scale of my cube layer, and I'll change that down to about 40%, just to shrink this down a bit. And then I'll pull up its position with P and I'll move it up in Y to about 290. And then I'll hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe. I'll move my playhead over to frame 100, and there I'll change my X value to 1255, and my Y value to 800. I'll move my playhead over to 200 now, and change my X value to 665. Then I'll move my playhead to 300, and I'll just copy and paste this first keyframe. Now I'll select all these keyframes and I'll right click on one of them and go to keyframe interpolation and change spatial interpolation to linear. That way I get a nice straight line. Now these values I just had from the last time I created the animation. So just so you know, that's how I came up with those numbers. Now I'll go up to layer, precompose, and I'll call this precomposition cube animation and I'll move all attributes and I'll hit OK. 
Now I'll go up to Effect, Time, Echo. In my Echo settings, I'll change the number of echoes to 300 and the Echo Operator to Composite in Front. I'll also go ahead and switch this from full to half to speed things up a little bit. So the echo effect is how we get this nice extrusion, but you can see things aren't quite right. And that's because of this impossible object. The way that we want to see it happen is we want this tail end to go behind this beginning, but that's just not the way things are layered. To get around this, we'll just be a little bit creative with some masking. So I'll grab my layer and I'll duplicate it and I'll just rename this one to be front and then I'll right click on the layer and go to time, time remapping. Over here around frame 75, I just want to make sure that it's enough to cover that tail end piece that kind of comes up here at the end. So this is pretty good. I'll set a time remap keyframe and then I'll go over to the end of the comp and get rid of that keyframe that's there at the end. Now I'll grab my pen tool and I'll just draw a mask here and make sure it covers everything and that should be good. So I'll click over here back to frame 300 where it's all over and yeah, there we go. It looks pretty good. So because we've done this as an echo, the nice thing is that this is going to start animating off for us too. And that's just because the echoes go away with time. So as time increases, the echoes go away and it acts as a perfect way for it to animate off. So at this point, our animation is pretty much done, but it's kind of slow and there's no easing. It's just linear keyframe, so it doesn't look super good. So in order to make this a little bit nicer and quicker, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-render this animation and then we'll retime it. So I'll go up to composition and I'll add it to my render queue. In the render queue, I'll click on the lossless here. And in my channels dropdown, I'll go to RGB plus alpha. Then I'll hit OK. Then I'll just choose where I want to output this to. And then I'll set it to render. So you may be wondering why not just pre-compose these two layers and time remap that pre-composition. Well, that's a perfectly viable option and you can absolutely do that. The reason I'm doing it this way though is because if I'm working with a pre-render, then it's gonna be way, way faster. The echo effect can really slow down things, so it's kind of a pain to work with, especially when we've got 300 iterations times two. So I found that this was a lot easier to work with when I started time remapping things. I also ran into some issues where when I was time remapping the pre-comp, I would get some dancing edges on the corners of my triangle. When I time remapped the pre-render though, those issues went away. So for those reasons, that's why I'm pre-rendering. All right, so my render's done now. I'm gonna go over to my project window and I'll double click so that I can import this render that I just did. So I'll navigate to it and I'll bring it in. With it in my project panel, I'll go ahead and click and drag it to the new composition button and that'll just make a new composition based on that render. I'll right click on this pre-render and I'll go to time, enable time remapping. So I'll drag my playhead over to frame 300, which is right in the center. And that's right where everything's perfect. And I'll set a time remapping keyframe. Then I'll select all my keyframes and I'll move my playhead to about frame 200. Then I'll option click on the last keyframe with all of them highlighted and drag it over so that it snaps over here to frame 200 by holding shift. Option clicking is called scaling your keyframes, so it's moving them all proportionally. And so what that'll do is it'll speed up my animation. Now I just wanna ease these keyframes to make a nice animation. So I'll go over to our free script under the influence and I'll change these values so that maybe it's 70 in and 70 out. And that's looking pretty good. So to finish this up, I'm just gonna go to layer, new, solid, 
and I just want a white background, so I'll hit OK, and I'll drag it beneath my triangle, and that just sort of finishes the look a little bit. See, nothing's impossible if you put your mind to it. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.